I want to make this very clear. Proton gaming is Linux gaming. Now, I've seen a disconcerting number of my fellow Linux citizenry engaging in what can only be described as gatekeeping. Trying to claim that Valve is harming Linux gaming by pushing Proton and Wine as a viable alternative to just doing the hard work and porting games natively to Linux. Guess what? That's a load of horseshit. Think back before Proton. How well was the do it right porting effort going? We had a handful of games. Most of them were indie games. Games like Psychonauts and Braid and Super Meat Boy. We had some bigger titles, titles like Rocket League and Civilization and City Skylines. We even had a few, and I mean a few, triple A games. Basically whatever Square Enix title Feral was porting at the moment. But the native Linux ports were few and far between, and as many people have pointed out, not the least of which Luke Lafreniere from LTT, while Linux sales made up fractions of a percent of overall sales of any specific title, the Linux versions always accounted for 80% or more of all bugs reported. Frankly, dealing with all those bug reports would quickly surpass whatever profit margins were being made from the sales to Linux customers. Dealing with each one would not just be financially irresponsible, it simply doesn't make business sense. So, like it or not, Proton addresses the four seemingly insurmountable issues with Linux gaming, and we'll go over them in this video. But before we do, make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. Not only do I talk about Linux gaming, but I got this thing right here in my hands. This is an awesome device, and if you subscribe now, you'll stay up to date with all the cool stuff that we're talking about with the Steam Deck. So the first problem that we're going to talk about is developer inexperience. Most of the time, game developers are familiar with Windows APIs, and only Windows APIs. There are many reasons for this. Most of the time, it's because Microsoft provides a very developer-friendly environment with excellent documentation, but Microsoft has also, at least traditionally, provided a ton of legacy support. Microsoft used to put time and effort into maintaining backwards compatibility with their old and established APIs for years and years, I mean, even spanning decades. At least, they used to. But it's not just that Windows traditionally had the best APIs and documentation, it's also that Windows had better debugging tools for average developers. But frankly, let's be honest, it's because Microsoft has a bully pulpit. Not only is Windows the de facto standard for desktop operating systems, but c -sharp is a proprietary Microsoft technology and an industry standard for game development, and DirectX is the most widely available graphics API for the PC. Frankly, it's no wonder why there aren't more native Linux games, and why many developers have actually ended native Linux support for their games. The next issue is moving targets. By contrast to Windows, Linux is a moving target. And core Linux developers are not sentimental about legacy software. We don't care about trying to run version 1.0 of Caden Live on a modern distro. Why would we even want to do that? So our APIs progress with breaking changes, and it's expected that the software that depends on them will get updated and get a new release. And that's the virtuous cycle of free and open source software. But the fact is, most games are not free and open source. They get released, maybe they get a few updates, and then they just stay that way. Unless they're a cash cow like Fortnite, they don't get years-long support cycles to adapt to breaking changes in operating system APIs. In years past, Microsoft's bread and butter was having Windows firmly entrenched in the business sector. Microsoft supported antiquated and obsolete APIs on Windows specifically because their backwards compatibility was how they made money and maintained their monopoly over the desktop. Today though, it's a different story. Microsoft's commitment to legacy Windows tech is no longer a given. Nowadays, Microsoft can't even be trusted to sustain functionality in supported versions of Windows, let alone obsolete APIs that legacy apps rely on. That's where Proton steps in. One of the best features of Proton is the fact that legacy titles have a rock-solid framework of well-understood Windows APIs exposed through a Linux environment. So while older titles are bound to randomly break due to a forced update on Windows, Proton will continue to just work for these older titles. Next up, we have missing features. Now, hardware support for Linux is better than it's ever been, but the biggest issue is that the support we need isn't there. For example, NVIDIA's driver support is unforgivably bad. There are no excuses for how absolutely trash NVIDIA's drivers are on Linux. For example, on Linux, RTX cards can't use hardware-accelerated video encoding. 
That is just not a feature that's exposed through the drivers on Linux. And it's the same way with other GPU features. I recall a story from many years ago of NVIDIA removing features from the Linux GPU drivers that weren't available on Windows because they wanted to, quote, maintain feature parity. They made the Linux drivers worse because the one way they were better wasn't supported on Windows. As we've covered above, backwards compatibility with Linux APIs isn't a massive concern, and as it stands now, NVIDIA treats Linux drivers as an afterthought, at best. NVIDIA is truthfully a special case of idiocy. Meanwhile, AMD answers every NVIDIA Linux shortcoming. Their unparalleled support for desktop Linux graphics is incredible. AMD created Mantle, which quickly evolved into the free and open source Vulkan API, the industry-leading low-level graphics pipeline that whoops DirectX. And while Vulkan is incredibly powerful, it has yet to see mass adoption. DirectX is still the dominant graphics language on the desktop, and DirectX simply is not available on Linux. But again, Proton makes up for this missing feature set, converting DirectX calls into the much more efficient Vulkan API. This abstraction layer provides the kind of DirectX environment that Windows games expect, and that's yet one more reason Proton is so awesome. But the biggest issue that Linux gaming has ever faced is the chicken and egg problem. Which comes first, the year of the Linux desktop or native Linux games? You can't have native Linux games without a massive desktop Linux install base to actually buy the games. And convincing millions of PC gamers to switch to Linux won't happen until their favorite games are available to play on Linux. This is the classic chicken and egg problem. Proton addresses all of these issues. With Proton, developers can continue to use the APIs they're familiar with, DirectX and the whole shebang. They only need to install Manjaro on a machine in their office and then test their game against Proton and fix any minor issues that might crop up. That means that they don't need to hire a team of Linux sysadmins to port the game to Linux, whose salaries would cost the company way more than the sale of a Linux version would ever warrant. Proton also provides a way for gamers to move to Linux and still access the vast majority of their existing Steam game library, thus short-circuiting the circular issue of no Linux games equals no Linux users means no Linux games. Once there's a path for people to use Linux and play their existing games, the Linux user base can grow and then developers can start profiting from supporting native Linux games. Proton is Linux gaming and no amount of gatekeeping or whining from some of the louder voices in our community will change that. And the Steam Deck is proof positive of where we're heading. Dare I say it, the Steam Deck is the first mass market desktop Linux gaming PC. And based on my first hand experience with this device and the critical reception that it's received, it not only is Proton Linux gaming, it's the future of PC gaming. And I don't think that's a bad thing. But I'd like to know what you think. Sound off in the comments below. Yeah, the Steam Deck is awesome. Uh, I'd love to know what you think about the Steam Deck too. Hit me up in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, hit that like button and lets me know uh, that you're enjoying these videos. You can also hit that subscribe button if that's more your speed. I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons on Patreon and my YouTube members, without whom I would not be able to do this. So thanks guys. If you believe in the work that I'm doing here and you wanna help support this show, you can use the links in the description to join the 100 plus other Linux warriors and make this show a reality. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next one.